mushroom season, all types of edible mushrooms like morels or bolitos, chanterelles, in particular, uh, chanterelles galore, galore in this area. So uh, any time during these two seasons when you go to a restaurant, invariably you will find a dish on the menus in the, uh, during the time right now, blueberry season, and then of course comes September and everybody is eating mushrooms, mushrooms everywhere. Just like to an end came the asparagus season. Uh, it starts in April. Everybody is eating asparagus, not the thin green one, but the white fat one. Uh, all my friends, uh, I, I don't cook them, but uh, I'm, thank goodness, always invited at my girlfriend's houses, and they always eat two or three times a week uh, the wonderful asparagus. Uh, in town, in Passau, for instance, in different sections of town, the asparagus farmers put up, starting April, they put up little wooden sales huts and they sell every morning fresh from the field the asparagus. Usually the usual meal is steamed asparagus served with boiled potatoes sauce hollandaise and then you have a choice of either with a breaded piece of veal like a viennese schnitzel or with uh, a piece of fish or two or three slices of boiled ham so these three dishes the variations during april May and until the beginning of June, everybody that I know eats white asparagus, the fat white in asparagus. is part of a national park, Schumava, the name, in the Czech Republic over here. On the German side, Bavarian Forest, we also have a national park. They practically overlap. So over here, it's Schumava, the national park. already in winter time lots of snow and where we will arrive at our highest point that little village a real vacation village Kubova Hood is the name I will point out the highest point to you once we get there Kubova Hood is a little vacation village with a downhill ski slope with several different uh, Nordic or cross-country skiing trails in summertime hiking trails and Kubova Hood advertises in the local Passau paper very very reasonable compared to any place in Germany uh, the hotels and lodges you will not be able to see from journey and here is the village Kubova Hood From here we go down, down, down towards Passau. <coughs> so the hotels and lodges on our left hand side here in the forests.
when you get to Germany, you need euros, of course, just like in Austria, like in Slovakia. And once you get to Hungary, the former currency is still in use, the foreign. <coughs> the end of the First World War in the year 1918 by the Allied forces at the Chateau Versailles into the countries that we know nowadays except for Czech Republic that used to be now for all the communist years known under the name Czechoslovakia and instrumental, I don't know if I mentioned that already, in establishing Czechoslovakia was Woodrow Wilson. So the empire came to a close 1918. The final spark to start the First World War was the assassination of Prince Ferdinand and his wife during a visit in the town of Sarajevo in Serbia. The last emperor, who was not his father, uh, Franz Joseph, he died during the First World War in the year 1916. Now, I said he was not his father, not the father of the crown prince. The actual crown prince had committed suicide together with his girlfriend two years before the start of the First World War. And the last emperor, Franz Joseph, designated his nephew to be the crown prince. And since he was with his wife assassinated in Sarajevo, then that was for Franz Joseph the final spark. Of course, there was much more behind uh, what I can tell you now, he, uh, but he considered it to, uh, to be the spark to declare war. Germany was allied with Austria, so Germany had to go to war too. The end of the war, 1918, of course, was very, very, very severe for Germany since the Allied, victorious Allied forces decided that Germany had to pay horrendous amounts, horrendous amounts of reparation. And many historians believe that that was the reason so that you know whom I'm talking about. I just want to say the word H. Herr Hitler, he, after the First World War, the country was literally starving. There were people dropping dead on the street because of starvation. So uh, after the Second World War, the Allied forces did not make the same mistake. In fact, Germany was included in the famous Marshall Plan. This was a very big surprise for Germany. Uh, Marshall, General Marshall, later on Secretary of State, who had this wonderful idea of sending money funds to the devastated Europe, including Germany. That was really a surprise for Germany to build up Europe again. And at least my generation, uh, we are very, very grateful to this day for that fact, just like we are grateful for the famous care packages that arrived after the Second World War, care packages that contained food, clothing, coffee, chocolates, and so on. They were sent by an organization that is still 
active in this day and age in the States. They have their seat in Atlanta, Georgia, in Europe, in Geneva, Switzerland. And the name of those packages, CARE, is made up of the name of the organization, which is cooperative for assistance and relief everywhere. And they still, in this day and age, send so-called care packages to distressed areas in the world. Cooperative for assistance and relief everywhere. You can look them up with Google again. I'm telling you all this because we are approaching shortly the former border point between the so-called West and the so-called East. We in Passau easily could have been occupied by Russian forces. From the border point, it will not take more than 30, 40 minutes until we arrive in Passau. Therefore, if the Russians would have marched on, we and divided in four sectors by all four victors allied forces. In order to get to Berlin, you had to pass through East Germany, unless you flew into Berlin. The flying reminds me of the famous blockade that Then we will pass through what was known as the no man's land and finally on the right hand side the former German customs house. Of course the Iron Curtain consisted of barbed wire, watchtowers, mines in certain areas, so-called silent alarms in certain areas and somebody stepped on something or touched something and an alarm sounded in the nearest watchtower. So over here, this, with all the new buildings, this used to be the Czechoslovakian border house consisting of one little wooden shack. Nowadays, all those new buildings and we are passing through what was known as the no man's land, which had no trees left and right hand side of the road here, so the soldiers on both sides could look into this area here. Up front, that little building used to be the German customs house. Over here, the sign of the European Union, Federal Republic of you to Germany and in particular to Bavaria. The forests here are known under the name Bavarian Forest. Uh, people outside Germany sometimes know the name Black Forest. This is not, 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 not Black Forest. The Black Forest is located on the west side of Germany, borders onto France, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, and Austria. Over here, you just experienced it. The Bavarian Forest borders onto the what is now known under the name Czech Republic, and on to our left hand side, it borders onto Austria. I mentioned already we also have a national park in this area which of course brings tourism in this area so maybe our people make a living in this area of interest to you we still have 
granite quarries here. Even so, nowadays, a lot of granite is being imported from where else but from China into Germany. We still have graphite mines here and many, many glass blowing factories. There's one Austrian company that has a plant here. The name, uh, what they make is like tableware glass, wine glasses, water glasses, and the like. Uh, the name is Riedel, R as in Richard, I-E-D-E-L. Uh, they do a tremendous export business to the United States. We have a school that teaches glass blowing in this area to which students from around the globe come to learn glass blowing plus cutting glass a lot of so-called cut glass from this area is being exported to the United States for instance So crystal meth, Czech Republic, known to be the biggest maker in Europe of crystal. warehouses they deliver with their own trucks to their customers in Europe and amongst their most prominent customers are the European Procter and Gamble 
the Nestle, the Swiss company, Heinz, the ketchup company. On the left here, the flat roof with air conditioning units on top, that's the local Aptar company. Uh, coming up, there's a wooden fence at the end of the wooden fence here. <laughs> the uh, billboard stating after and to the left of the billboard the american flag the german flag and the bavarian flag here on the left hand side so uh, i started mentioning the famous customers of aptar here uh, procter and gamble nestle heinz the ketchup company and the very very big The little town it will be on our left hand side, you see it better later on, perched against the hill, this base, the soldiers patrolling the Iron Curtain, as I mentioned already, the city of Passau, the town of Passau. Uh, also had an American base, uh, but a very, very small one. This is Fryong. 